can see it. This thing's ticking. Yes, it is. Hey, guys. Ryan Levron here. It is a very bright, warm, sunny day at the very tail end of October 2021. And as of the making of this video, I am at a Lux truck stop in, I believe it is Neosho, Missouri, which is just south of Joplin, Missouri. And as you can tell in the video, no snow, no ice. Very warm, sunny day, as you can tell by my short sleeves. And uh, I have been asked by quite a few people if I would do a video on how to chain up. And it's not that I've been putting the video off. It is more or less the fact that I've been waiting for what I felt was the right time. And this is a warm, sunny day, a very, very light breeze. And it's really, really good and bright. And I got several parking spaces right next to me wide open. So at this point, I feel somewhat comfortable setting up my camera on my tripod and getting started. Very, very unfortunate, but I don't know of any trucking school in the United States that teaches people how to chain up. Even trucking schools up in the north where they get a lot of snow and ice. And I don't know any trucking companies where the trainers teach people how to train, chain up. And I've been asked by quite a few people if I would do one of these videos. So we're going to go ahead and get to work. Now I've already got the chain out. Let's go ahead and get this started. Here's the chain. I've already got it out. Now in one video I've made before, I made reference to this being the head of the chain, what I call the head, because we've got these little, it's a short end, it's a little short, and it's got the little hooks here. The other end of the chain, what I call the tail end, has got these long scraggly chains that's just hanging off that ain't got nothing on it. Now, when you go to put your chains on, the first thing you want to do is stretch the chain out. That way you can see what you have and where it's at, okay? When you go to put your chain on, now I will be picking the camera up and moving it quite a bit. I'll be doing a lot of commentary, a lot of back and forth. When you go to put your chain on, you want to make sure these knuckles right here are facing outside the rubber. You do not want to put your chain where these knuckles are digging into the rubber because once you tighten your chain down, it could cause tire damage. And if you have a, a problem with the tire and it blows out on the middle of climbing a mountain pass, you're going to have some major issues. Now, once we get this chain on top of this tire, like I said a moment ago, now I was told that these were called dog paws. I personally just call them claws. You call them what you want. But we're gonna put this chain on in such a way to where these claws are facing the outside. Once we get them on, I'm gonna be working on the inside in between these two drive tires. And I'm gonna take that end of the chain and pull it through in between the two tires and I'm gonna hook it to this hook right here. So this hook right here is gonna be grabbing that chain over there. And we're gonna do that to the inside of the drives first. And we're gonna catch it, and then we're gonna to come to the outside and do the same thing. So let me go ahead and put the tripod down, get that started, and then we'll go again. Just a moment. Just a moment. Now, if you noticed, I got the chain on, 
and I got my dog paws or claws facing outside. And if you notice, I got the swivels on the outside where I can get to them. If you put the chain on and these swivels are on the inside the drive tire, you're not gonna be able to chain up properly, okay? I should have mentioned that before I threw the chain on and I apologize for that. But you always want these claws to be facing outside and you always want your swivel knuckles to be on the outside. That way you can get to them. Now, I'm gonna reach in with this tool right here. This tool right here, right here. What I call a fifth wheel puller. It's actually designed to go in here and grab that fifth wheel uh, pin and pull the fifth wheel loose. But I also use it for chaining up. You can get those at almost any truck stop. It's a fifth wheel puller and that little hook right there comes in so handy for chaining up. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get in between these two tires, crawl up in a little bit. I'm looking for this chain right here, but on the inside, I'm gonna pull it as far as I can, and then I'm gonna hook it to this hook right here, but on the other side. Give me just a moment, I'll do that. I'll come right back to you. Now, that took a little bit more of a struggle than what I was expecting because I didn't have the chain on this backside 
all squared away. But now that I do, what we're gonna do now noticed I got it hooked to the to the hook right there and I got the same thing on the other side now I don't know if you guys noticed but I fought the inside first because quite frankly that's the hardest side to do and I've done my hardest side first that way when I come on the outside the main fight is closest to me now what we got to do move the truck forward a little bit so we can get all that loose spot on top. So let's move forward and then we're gonna finish up. Remove the whole truck forward a little bit. Well, what the goal here is, is to put this loose part up here to where we can make readjustments. Y'all give me just a moment. Now, if y'all noticed, I moved the truck up a lot. Now, the, see all that slack in the chain? This part right here wasn't the bottom. Now we can make readjustments and tighten that up. Let me show you. We're gonna start on the inside. this see this knuckle right here that's the first knuckle that we tied together that's on the inside the drive tires but all this slack on here all this slack we're going to tighten up the inside knuckle first and that way the it puts the fight on the outside where we are So let's readjust that and then we'll move to the outside. Can. 
try to close this up by one link. And we did it. Now, now is when this little tool comes in handy. I call it a chain wrench. You can call it what you want, okay? But you can get them at your company terminal, or you can get them at almost any truck stop. Sometimes they come in L shape, shaped a lot like this. I wanted the T handle so that way I can do like this, like this, and turn. Let's tighten up those swivels now. All right, good. I need to make sure y'all getting a good view of this. We're going to let me bring the camera in a little closer. Y'all need to watch. Let's tighten up those swivels. These swivels right here. That one's tight. If y'all notice, this swivel right here, if you notice, is still open and unlocked. This swivel here is closed tight. But if you notice, there's almost no slack in the chain. All right? Now, at this point, you are almost done chaining up. We got one thing left to do. Give me just a moment. single straight black cord I got I call this right here my spider bungee I picked it up at Iowa 80 in Walcott Iowa and when I open it up you'll see why I call it my spider bungee yep. sorry about that I don't want my trash going everywhere that's my trash not going to intentionally litter somebody else's parking lot. Now, just like these claws right here, you want these hooks facing the outside. Guys and gals, that is 100% officially chained up and ready to go. Just under 20 minutes to do this, and half of that was spent talking in this video and leading commentary. So, my advice to everybody do not wait until you're 
in the middle of the core of winter on a mountain pass and the sign is lit up saying truckers must chain to make that your very first experience chaining up. My advice, take a warm, sunny day like today, breezy, wind, whatever, doesn't matter, practice chaining up. Just now saw me do it, normally as a rule, I'll tell you this, the very first time I ever chained up, it took me two and a half hours to put on two sets of chains. I didn't know what I was doing. Very young, never been taught. Very young in, in, in the art of chaining, let me put it that way. Never been taught how to chain up. My trainer never taught me how to chain up. No company I was ever with taught me how to chain up. I was blindsided by it. First time I ever chained up, I was climbing Monarch Pass in Colorado and I come up on that little trucker pull-off spot and that big sign flashing, truckers must chain. And I thought, oh crap, what do I do now? Well, I pulled off on that little spot and I had to make a very short, very quick decision. Do I do something I've never done before and take a chance on screwing up? Or do I find a way to turn around and go back and just sit on this load for God knows how long? I chose to go ahead and learn how to chain up. Fortunately for me, there was a flatbed driver there that was willing to walk me through it. I watched him chain one of his, he supervised me chaining one of mine, and then he left. On the second chain, I was on my own. First time I ever chained up, even with help, took me two and a half hours. Second time I chained up, all on my own, no help whatsoever, took me about an hour and a half to put on two sets of chains. The last time I chained up, it took me about 45 minutes to put on four sets of chains. Think about it, that's just a hair bit over 10 minutes per set of chain to set your chains up like that and get them nice and tight, okay? My advice to everybody, do not, do not, do not wait until the middle of the core of winter when you're climbing a mountain pass to make that your first time chaining up. I strongly, strongly suggest you take time out on a nice day, not necessarily on a day like I'm in right now, but on a nice day and practice chaining when you don't have the interference of 500 million trucks that are chaining up at the same time you need to chain up. A rest area, the road right in front of your house, a truck stop with lots of ample parking right next to you. On a decent day like today, take some time out and throw some chains. I promise you, 100%, guarantee you, or as we would say in down south Louisiana where I'm from, I guarantee you, once you throw one chain on, you will get the idea. And then after that, every time you put a chain on, it'll get a little easier and a little easier. Now, let's go ahead and take the chain off in reverse. But before I do that, I wanna let you know something. How I had the chain laid up a while ago before I started tying everything together, where one end was down, one end was down over here. Do yourself a favor. If you're practicing at your house or at a truck stop or at a rest area on a decent day like I have today, you only need to do one chain, no problem. But if you're on a mountain pass in the core of winter and you got 500 million trucks stopped because everybody's chaining up, when you get that chain on the top of that tire, don't tie in that one chain and then move to the next and tie in that chain and then move to the next and tie in that chain. Don't do it that way. You get your chain laid over your tire and get your second chain out, put it over the tire. Then get your third chain laid out, put it over the tire. Whether you need two sets of chains or four sets of chains will depend on the state you're driving in at the time. Get all of your chains out that you're going to need put them over the tires like you're going to like like as though you're going to tighten them down and all at the same time whether you get two sets or four sets doesn't matter 
you do all the chains all at one time and then when you done got on your knees and your hands are full of ice because snow and ice is getting in your gloves go ahead and pull all the little hooks together one chain at a time and then once you got all the chains hooked together then roll the truck forward or backward depending on your circumstances how much room you have to work with and then tighten them all down one two three four in other words don't tie one chain down and then fight with a second one and then fight with the third one you get it all set up to where you fight them all at the same time that way you're done all at the same time all that being said now let's take this chain off in reverse everything going in reverse now first thing we're going to do is take my spider bungee off because that's the last thing that went on Now guys and gals, this is also a very important step. You notice how part of the chain is under the tire and hanging out? Let me show you something. Let's go ahead and get this one ready. Now, I can't just take that chain out like that. Even when you're sitting on six, eight inches of snow and ice, you're not gonna be able to just rip the chain out. That being said, be very careful, y'all listen to me close, be very careful and set yourself up to where you do not roll over these swivels. You almost have no choice but to roll over some of these knuckles. Almost got no choice. But do not roll over these swivels. If you roll over the swivels and you bend or twist the swivels, the entire set of chain is completely screwed and you will need a new set of chain. Do not roll over them. So the way I handle that, I pull the chain out like this. And the short end that's just barely hanging out from under the tire, I usually leave that just sit like it is. Now, let me do this. If you notice, I've got only about two feet of chain hanging out from the back end and all the excess is out of the front end. I don't have any swivels in the way of the tire coming backward. And what I call swivels is these things right here that you have to use that T-handle to lock in place or what I call the chain wrench. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna back up straight a couple of feet to get off the chain. And then I'm going to show you how to pick the chain up in a, an efficient way. So let me get out of the way. I'm going to back up. And then I'm going to show you how to lay out the chain to pick them up.
All right. Sometimes you may not be able to go backwards to roll off of it like that. Sometimes you may have to go forward to roll off of them like that. It all depends on the situation you're in when you're up on that mountain pass and you got a million trucks surrounding you trying to do the same thing you're doing. But right now, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna stretch the chains out and I'm gonna show you an efficient way of storing up your chain for another use. Now, as far as, as far as storing your chain up later on for an efficient use, I'm not gonna be able to show you a full detailed shot of that because quite frankly, I don't have anybody holding the camera for me. But if you wanna see a full detailed video of storing your chain up in an efficient manner to where it's efficient, and looks good. I do have another video concerning exactly the same subject on that in one of my very first videos ever on my channel. So if you're new to my channel, just scroll back as far as you can and you'll find that efficient way of storing chains video in there. In the meantime, let me stretch these chains out and give you a quick rundown of how I store the chains up. A very efficient way and it makes it very easy to get to the chains the next time Now, when we're dealing with the chains, I got it all stretched out now. This end right here is what I call the tail, the tail end, because you got these two excess chains just hanging off of it, and these length of chains don't have nothing on it but chain lengths, that's it. The other end is what I call the head of the chain, because it's got these little clips that clip into the tail that help you lock everything down. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you a very efficient way of picking up this chain to store it away to where it looks nice on the rack and it's very easy to get to the next time you need it. All right, we're going to start right here with rung number one. We're going to skip two and grab the third and work our way all the way down. Now, picking up your chains like that, it keeps the loose scraggly end of the chain up high. And by the time you put it on the rack, let's go around and look at the rack and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you want a better video of an efficient way to store chains, I've got that video in the very beginning of my channel. But right now, let's look at how I got, let's look at what I'm talking about, see? If you look at my chain rack, it doesn't look all messy and tangly like a gigantic spider web. Let's go ahead and put these chains up while I'm here. See, I've got four chains back there, two on this hook, two on that hook, and then two here and two here, all eight chains. And look at here, nothing dragging the ground. So, hopefully, 
that video is going to help somebody figure out how to put the